Hello and welcome to The Daily Atheist. It is Monday, February 3rd, 2020. And uh, today is an interesting day. We're going to get into it. Oh, let me introduce my people here. Uh, Chris is back. He's still alive. The atheist pastor, Chris. He's Well, we think he's still alive. We don't see him. The, uh, the, the rumors of my death were wildly exaggerated. <laughs> it sounds more like... Um, uh, is it not your witness? Is that who it sounds like? <laughs> the, your voice <laughs> maybe, is one, maybe we're one and the same. Maybe <laughs> I never see you guys together. And all right, so today today is an important day. It is the the Iowa caucus is happening in Iowa, not Kansas, Mr. President. Anyway, <laughs> but, and we've got Justin Scott here. He is from the Iowa American Atheist. Good morning, Justin. Good morning, everyone. How's it going? Long time no see. I know, right? We're glad to have you back. Uh, atheist Pastor Chris, He's he's been down um, with the Australian plague, the cooties. Just depends on <laughs> what you call it. And so, but today, Keep it down there. Keep it down there. <laughs> I, I told him to stay well, back I, from the money. I was talk about politics, so I had to come on. I assume that you're all uh, wanting to talk about uh, we might have a new deputy prime minister tomorrow. I assume that's what the discussion is. You're talking Australian politics. <laughs> that, I mean, that's ex hey, that's all we're talking about in Iowa is Australian politics. Fucking <laughs> exactly. imagine. Yeah. So um, Chris is going to be. He he said he's he's of course he's still down. Uh, he'll he's going to visit with us for you know a few minutes, and uh, then he might leave. But I just it's glad to have him back. At least he's he's still alive. And and we've got folk over in the chat. One ring is here this morning. Is is it early for you? Good morning, One Ring. How are you doing today? And then Math Pig, El Matho de Pigo, Critical Cripple is here. All the usual suspects. Actually, we're missing somebody. Has anybody seen Gaytheist? I haven't seen Gaytheist in a while. Just raise your hands in the chat if you've seen Gaytheist. I haven't seen him. So if you guys see him, tell him to stop by. Um, yeah, so today is the Iowa caucus, and that is what Justin is here for. He's going to talk about not, not Australian, but you know they really do have some interesting politics going on down there. It's some right now in Australia. Am I right, Chris? Or am I right? Yes, yeah, so we've. Um, there, there was a little bit of a scandal that uh, that happened. So what happened just prior to the election? There was um, it's called the the sports grant scandal, where there was some. Grants given to different sport clubs that happen to be in um, what we call marginal seats, so the seats that you want to win, which isn't unusual in politics. I guess it's like, you know, there's a lot of attention in Iowa at the moment. You know, everyone sort of focuses on the seats they can win. But um, there was a slight scandal, and, and what's happened is, as a result of that out of nowhere, um, our so our, our lead, so we've got a coalition that, I guess, is the ruling. Uh, so we've got the Liberal Party, which is the main part, and the National, which is like the country version. So the Liberal Party provides the Prime Minister, Nationals provide the Deputy. Sure. Well, they've just had a challenge, but the Deputy Prime Minister's challenged, and he'll probably be the Deputy Prime Minister again tomorrow morning. Interesting. It's, it's almost like real politics. <laughs> <laughs> like grown-up people politics. I'm sorry. Uh -huh. I know nothing about it. Well, sometimes it's... Uh, it's the, you guys are lucky in the States where, with, with your president... You, you vote for them, you get them for four years. They, they don't get overthrown. There's nothing funny that happens. Uh, we have a prime minister and their party can just decide to replace them. Essentially, it's like the leader of the, um, uh, what is it, your lower house there, um, Congress. Oh, so the leader, leader of the house is mm -hmm. our prime minister. You kind of just threw me off when you said you all are lucky in the states with your president, and I went, "Wait a minute!" I, I said, know. "I said, which way is he going with this?" I thought a vessel was going to burst in your eye. <laughs> <laughs> so should we talk Iowa quick? And not, no. nothing against Australia. I'd love to go down to Australia sometime. Right. And, you know, I'm probably going to drop out in a second. But I just want to say Iowa is looking very interesting, and I did want to find out, Justin, who do you reckon is going to win? Who's your tip? Yeah, it's uh, it's going to be very interesting tonight. Um, so really, first, if you don't mind me just running with this, um, first, let me give a shout out to my friends, uh, including Javier, who partied all night with his grandfather, uh, big time Kansas City Chief fan. <laughs> I myself am not a Chief fan, but we went to Kansas City for my wife's birthday back in March. This was our first time in Kansas City. And the Royals organization gave myself, my wife, and our three kids all brand new Royals hats for free because we just happened to be walking around the stadium. Um, awesome. Do, yeah. Me, so don't let me interrupt you real quick, Chris. Do you need to bow out? Yeah, I might just quickly bounce out. Sorry. Um, so I will say goodbye to everyone, and um, I will see you all 
in the next few days, I'm sure, once I get over this bloody cough. Right. I'm not you. Well, take care, sir. <laughs> See you all. Have fun. Get better. Yeah. All right, Justin, go ahead. Carry on, sir. Yeah, so I was just going to make a really bad joke, but don't think that if you creep around a Major League Baseball stadium, they're going to walk out and give you baseball hats. But <laughs> since they gave me one, uh, I decided to wear it today and uh, you know to recognize the Chiefs' win last night. Anyway, we have Iowa going on. Um, we got the Democratic side and the Republican side. A lot of people don't realize the Republicans are having their event tonight, too. So mm -hmm. I want to make sure, as state director for American Atheists, that I'm talking about both both parties' activities. Right. And just to give everyone a quick rundown, uh, what's very interesting about the caucus is that it's not a vote. It's not a primary. You're not walking in to submit a ballot. You're not walking in to vote for somebody. You're right. walking in basically to show who your preference is, mm -hmm. which is, is fascinating. And if you've never taken part in it, it is basically um, like a neighborhood block party mm -hmm. inside, inside a central meeting spot that is loaded with peer pressure. So if peer pressure is not your thing, I could see how you would stay. I, I could see how you would stay home. But on top of that, too, it is one of the best ways to disenfranchise voters. So while right. I sit here and enjoy it and, and embrace it and I enjoy Iowa being number one, I also recognize the, the, the issues with it, the flaws in it, because it happens at night. If you can't be there, you don't get to take part in it. And honestly, that's a terrible thing. I mean, if you're if you're a single parent or dual parents. Um, or you're a household uh, of, of grandparents that are, are caring for a child or adopted or foster parents and you can't get out, you get left out of the process. So I just want to make sure that I'm very clear that I'm not standing here going rah, rah, caucus. You know, I'm saying here saying this is the best system we have. Let's just use it. Um, gotcha. But anyway, it starts, starts at 7 p.m. sharp. The rules state as long as you're in line by 630, you get to take part. And so at least uh, I've never taken part. <laughs> I'm going to tip my hat here or, or show my hands here, I should say, but I've never taken part in a Republican caucus. So I'm not exactly sure that it's different or same, but I know on the democratic side, you walk in, right. you get checked in, um, you find the part of the room where your candidate is standing and you get to go over and stand with them. And the whole thing is about trying to lobby the undecideds. It's trying to find those folks that don't know who they want to, who they want to support. And then the interesting thing is the Iowa democratic party changed the rules this year. So they're only going to do what's called a, a realignment once. I saw that. So yeah, it's going to be very interesting because if you show up and you're not sure who you want to support, you could literally create a not sure candidate. And get stuck in that candidate and, and unable to change stuck in later. That what the Absolutely. hell? Absolutely. So you know, you're all. I I hate to say this, but maybe I misunderstood this. But you're almost better off just picking your most favorite, even if they're not perfect. Right. And just and just riding with it. Uh, but then they'll do one realignment where they'll say, okay, if you're with a candidate, an actual candidate that um, isn't viable, and viability is based on a fifteen percent threshold. Mm -hmm. So if you're not viable, you have a choice. You can either, I think, go home <laughs> right. or you can move around the room. And so in 2008 and 2016, I was on opposite ends of that experience. So in 2008, I was with a non-viable candidate. Okay. And for some reason, I, try, I decided to dig my heels in. Nope, I'm going to stay here. It's like, well, it doesn't make sense. Why would, why would you stay there? <laughs> you're basically right. just an observer. At that um, point, yeah. And, yeah. And then in 2016, I was with a very popular candidate and I basically had my entire neighborhood there. So that that was uh, that was a very different experience. I would say less stressful experience. Hmm. So how, how is it with you now in American Atheist? I know you're really careful about it seems you're really careful about not apparently backing anybody at this point. At what point do you get to go? Yeah. <laughs> Bob, you you know I get asked a lot. I got asked on Twitter just a couple days ago if I was going to make an endorsement, and you know I would even say if I was on my personal Facebook page at this point, I probably wouldn't endorse any of them. And the biggest reason why is I think there are many candidates uh, on one side that could really make positive change in our country. I really want to keep in mind how they interacted with me, what answers they gave me, 
Also, what action they, they did after the words they gave me. And unfortunately, and I was able to talk to a lot of them, I didn't walk away feeling a thousand percent confident um, right. that, that any of them really had our back, that any of them are really, re- you know, really willing to say the word atheist, are really willing to reach out to us directly. Um, and, and don't get me wrong, I'm, I'm not going to be so naive to think, oh, yeah, Justin, they can stop their campaigning just to call you and make sure you feel good. That's not what this is about. But we literally reached out to them before the before the whole process kicked off. Mm-hmm. You know, we 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 got a hold of their all their campaigns and said, "Listen, we're here. We're the single largest voting block. You know, non-religious, and we want to play a part in this." And yet, there was never, <laughs> from what mm-hmm. I can see, uh, a concerted effort to bring us into the circle. Okay, so we've kind of that. That's an interesting point you make there about how they how they embrace atheism. Okay, so now we've, we've got two points of focus. How a candidate of these that are available embraces us as atheist. That's point one. And then at some point we have to go, all right, let's just pretend all of them say they don't care about us. Now we have to worry about the country. At what point? Oh, absolutely. Go, absolutely. Right? There's got to be that step where you go, all right, Bernie may not have come out and done this, but he's the one who gets my support or Kamala gets my support because I, I shouldn't. Right, have Bernie for right, it, right. Just come. <laughs> but you know what I mean? At what point do you go, okay, let's go, let's go beyond our tiny little tribe and go right. to a bigger tribe, the whole right. country at what point? And don't get, and don't get me wrong. I'm a mouthpiece for this movement. I, I, I am a mouth, I'm a mouthpiece for my own personal activism. So yeah. I am all on board with what you're saying. I just had uh, speaking of, I had three Bernie supporters knock on my door yesterday um, so I, I, I get that. And I'm not trying to say that that's not important. I'm really just trying to be very focused on what we are, fo- you know, working on here. Uh-huh. Um, but you know, if I could, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. If, uh, if I could take my, my American atheist hat off for a moment and make sure this doesn't get used out of context later on, this is not the opinion of American atheists. This is not the opinion of any major organization. Um, but me personally, I'm much more on the far left side. I'm, I'm much more on the, if we're going to make these major structural changes, it's going to have to come from a candidate that's willing to challenge the status quo and really honestly piss people off. Right. And so well, that's what they did on the right. They got, uh, what, you know, we kind of need the equal on the left. It's kind of, that's anyway, my opinion too. And see, no, 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 it's good. I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, in your in your deal, I can kind of get it though. You so now I'm I'm gonna say I'm a Bernie supporter. And then all of a sudden liberals who are on watching my show go, Oh, really? Well, I'm Hillary only, and they're they're gone all of a sudden because you know, I and you don't want that as is to to represent your organization. You don't want people going, I saw him come out for X candidate, and I right, don't like right. X candidate, so I'm not gonna do that. Right now, you're kind of right. uh, of course most I would I feel comfortable saying most of atheism leans left. Would I be wrong? It's very interesting. So I ha- I'm going to look this up. I apologize Uh-oh. for typing while well, no, uh, we're on the show. But there was a story Wonderful. in news. There was a story in Newsweek uh, 18 hours ago, and it, the headline is "Atheists and Agnostics Support Bernie Sanders." Again, Newsweek saying this uh, while Christians and Jews favor Joe Biden. Really? I'll send if that to you. If you'll just pop it up there, you know, on your screen, you've got share screen down there. One of the buttons is share screen on the. Well, screen. I'm I'm streaming through my phone because oh, my oh. computer, no. my computer is apparently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I just sent it to you. But anyway, it says in the story uh, and I quote again, this is from Newsweek. Apparently, this was a national Pew Research uh, survey uh, of registered Democrats released Friday, found that Biden holds the support of 36 percent of Protestants. And that doesn't surprise me. If you you saw the headlines recently, Biden actually employed, I don't think he hired them, but he put nuns out there to send um, postcards to other Catholics across Dubuque, Iowa, which is a very Catholic Northeast Iowa town by the Mississippi River. Uh Um, And then lastly, it says, while nearly twice as many atheists, agnostics, and unaffiliated unaffiliated voters support either Sanders or Elizabeth Warren. Okay. If I can, if I can, knowing this now, which only confirms what we have known for months. Uh-huh. Yeah, and it's right it's right about on the left side where there's those little related stories. It's inside that paragraph. Okay. 
seeing that Newsweek and Pew have confirmed what we've already known, and then adding that to the fact that I literally went up to these candidates and told them that, mm-hmm. and yet, and yet there was no action on the issue. There were no statements. Uh, there, there were no Facebook posts. I mean, I literally told them, like, listen, let's take a selfie together and let's put it out to the world that, you know, atheist voters matter. I will, I will also share that probably the only tangible action that I saw the entire time that I went out was from Andrew Yang. And it was right. after, interestingly enough, it was after a religious interfaith, <laughs> I say interfaith with air quotes because it had two Christian <laughs> pastors, how, how interfaith is two Christian pastors. <laughs> but immediately after I took a selfie with him, he looked at me and he's like, hey, so what are the atheist numbers up to? Like, what, how, how high are, or how large is your group? Mm-hmm. And I told him, and like 15 minutes later, uh, he sent out a tweet that said something like, this country is for all of us. Um, no, I, I want to go find that. Hemet Mehta, the friend, friendly atheist, actually uh, did a story about it. Okay. And I'll send that to you as well. Good, good. Yes. We'll pop that up. This, this was from December 15th, 2019. And I'm just sending it to you now. Okay. I, again, this was... A story that's titled, An Encounter with an Atheist Presumably Led to This Andrew Yang Tweet. He says, whether you worship or not, this campaign and country are for you. So, you know, I can't say that that really is making a huge difference, but it was such a nice pat on the back right. to the fact, you know, to, to us and to the fact that he did something after the, after the, uh, the interaction with me. Mm-hmm. Um, who knows if he's viable? I've been seeing polls where he's doing very well. I've been seeing polls where he's struggling. It'll be very interesting because the people that I see support him bring up just how different his approach to all of this is, uh, which I think will be very interesting. I'll, I'll admit, in, if the viewers want to hear this, during the interfaith event, he was very structured he was very formal it wasn't exciting i don't feel like he was allowed to really talk off the hip right um but during the event later that afternoon or evening he was just letting it all hang out and that was actually the andrew yang that i enjoyed was later that night because i felt like he was more real at that point so see you bring religion into something and then it just changes you (laughs) well um one of the things that's a good point Uh, one of the things about him is it uh, he's so i'd have to i have to completely catch up and find out all of his policies and politics and what he believes and all those things you know um to and he's such a small name in the the sphere of what's going on that it's kind of hard to imagine that he would get that far here's what's interesting so looking at iowa keeping what you just said in mind okay you could have as many as three three winners tonight and, and obviously be depending on the spin and the marketing of the campaigns that could, that could change too. But right. you're, you're going to have the Iowa democratic party first reporting, which candidate brought the most people there as soon as the doors opened. Okay. That's going to, that's going to be a fascinating number. Like who got the most people there? That's going right. to show who had the, the system in place, who had the grassroots army out there working. Um, Based on the level of door knocks and phone calls I've gotten, um, mm-hmm. I would I would I would not be surprised if Bernie Sanders took the first number, because right. that's just who that's just as an Iowan who I've been just bombarded with phone calls. Elizabeth Warren has been very active on text messaging. Mm-hmm. Um, even if you get a text message that says, "Hey, uh, Shaniqua, Yolanda, do you live there?" <laughs> this ain't not Shaniqua. This is not Yolanda. I'm not either of them. Please, you know, please update your records. Right. But um, the second number they're going to report is who had the most after realignment. And so with yeah. realignment, that candidate gets to argue, well, I'm the consensus builder. I'm the co- coalition builder. I'm the person that brought over the most number two supporters. Mm-hmm. And it'll be it'll be interesting because you're going to see a, a, a unique dynamic. Big city, small city. I My personal opinion is in the big cities you're going to see a lot of Bernie Elizabeth Warren support. And it'll be interesting to see where the Joe Mm -hmm. Biden support goes to like Dubuque's going to be an, a unique town uh, with Joe Biden. 
But mm-hmm. on the flip side, I think you're going to see a lot of rural voters and rural precincts because they're a little bit older. Yeah. Leaning, leaning up with Joe Biden. It'll be, in, it'll be interesting. I have to shut my notifications off. My damn phone. keeps <laughs> Um, probably because they want to come watch your show, you know? There you go. Tell um, me over here. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, it'd be but nice be- if we could stream some of what's going on today. That would be crazy. I hadn't even thought about that. But I'm, I mean, I wasn't excited about it. I, I just, you know, it's politics and I don't normally right, keep right. up with politics. But this morning I got up and I wasn't sure if you were going to be here. I didn't see anything from you. I hadn't gotten anything back from you. H. Sure. H. I didn't know if he's going to be here. So I was reading up on it because I was going <laughs> to, I found it really fascinating. I learned quite a bit about what was going on. And then I'm like, hell, I want to know. In my mind, I have my preferred candidate. Right, right, mind, right, right. I see it opening and everybody swelling to him. Sorry, him, that person, right? Or the, to the to the other way, really. And then because I haven't really seen Joe Biden as being um, as viable as the media is putting off, and this will be a telltale what happens. You know, it's gonna be very. It's gonna be very interesting because those. Yeah. I'm just gonna talk as a not as just an Iowa voter that is somewhat involved, but is involved from a very specific niche because okay. I don't study poll. I don't study polls. I don't have a degree in political science. I heard a phrase, uh, a concept called the horseshoe theory back in 2016. Viewers, if you know more about this than I do, find me on Facebook. Let's chat about it. Correct me, whatever. But the idea is when you have two candidates that are so close in what their messaging is, they can appear to be very similar Mm -hmm. to, to, to each other. And I think what I heard in 2016 is that Donald Trump and Bernie Sanders were so close to being each other because they were, they were running on a populist idea. Mm -hmm. It's just, as you come down the horseshoe, the, the premise of where they got to that is way different. Mm-hmm. I'm, yeah. I'm curious how many of those Donald Trump horseshoe voters go over to Bernie in this caucus that yeah. said, you know what? We took a chance on Donald Trump. We didn't get what we wanted. Again, their, their thoughts, not mine. Right. Um, I'm, I, I guess this year or this go around, we're going to go with Bernie. That will be very interesting. An interesting one. Um, yeah, well, I I went in the prime before the primaries out. Well, I went with Bernie, and then I'm I'm not one of those people, man. I've never met anybody personally who said they loved Bernie, and when Bernie didn't get it, they went for Trump. I've never. I'm sure they're out there, but I've never met. Yeah, I, I yeah, yeah, yeah. For Bernie, and when he didn't get it, I went for uh, Hillary Clinton. Despite how I felt about her, I didn't think uh, I was un, un, I was frustrated with how the the primaries went. I didn't believe her and the DNC did Bernie right. I, there were despite real not real i don't know i just even despite all those things i still voted for her because she was our option against something much worse right what right right, right. evils i don't care it's still <laughs> you know? right right i'm okay with it well it's going to be very interesting too because i want to see so right now there's this idea in iowa and and by all means crucify me if i'm if i'm spouting nonsense that the top oh. three are pr- the top three are probably going to be a, any combination of these four. It's going to okay. be Joe Biden, Joe Biden, Elizabeth Warren, uh, Bernie Sanders, and Pete Buttigieg. I'm curious because Pete had a late surge there towards the end of 2019. Mm-hmm. I'm curious, does Pete finish in the top three? And if he does, which one of those three gets pushed down to fourth? I think that's going to be a bigger story than who finishes quote unquote first. Cause again, mm-hmm. you might have two first place candidates. You might have the candidate oh, yeah. or the campaign that says I had the most here at the start versus I had the most here after realignment. Mm-hmm. But I think that number third, that number three, if it's Pete pushes him in New Hampshire and then really makes things interesting in, in South Carolina, he, from what I've seen, he has absolutely no black vote. He has no black support. And I think that's going to be very troubling nationwide. Yeah. And I find that very, very interesting. Now, don't come at me, Pete supporters, because <laughs> oh, right. I mean, I'm sure there's uh, a few I, out there, right? Yeah, but yeah, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. With Tom Steyer, my personal opinion is he won't drop out until probably Super Tuesday if he doesn't do well in Iowa, because he's right. got the funding to do it. He's got the funding to ride this out, and for for big for big money folks like him and Michael Bloomberg, we all know that Iowa is just kind of something fun to go do. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it'll be fun to see where Andrew Yang and Amy Klobuchar are. Um, I'm very curious about Klobuchar. There was kind of a late surge with her as well. But when I say surge, 
it's not like she went from 2% to 25%. I mean, it was like 2% wow. to nine or 10 or 12. So that's, I don't know. It'll be interesting. Well, you know, you were talking about the black vote with Booty Judge, and I, I was thinking, and this is just just me, I would have to ask some of them. Um, but with him, well, right, so let's get past the whole um, primary. We let's say we wake up and he has won the primary, and he's going to be all, all the stuff, and he's going to be our, our our. I think they would vote for him, even though there's not currently a black vote. At that point, there would be. I would think. Just because it's him or the Republicans, no, that's well. I think I think there would be a segment of black voters that would go to him by default. Would it be overwhelming? Would it be to the level of Barack Obama or Bill Clinton? I right. doubt it. Yeah, yeah. Um, one ring forty-two. Let's see okay, this. Let's, see, let's go see what he says here. Honestly, the DNC yeah. should keep their hands out of the primary because if they do for Biden what they did for Hillary, it gives credence to the GOP saying the impeachment was just a political move. You know, not just that, really. Uh, if they do what did they did for Biden, or if they do the same thing they did for Hillary Clinton, then they prove everything the people on the right or the left said. The the Bernie people last year who or in the last election who said felt like he got robbed. It'll just be another another thing. We may as well just get our own party. What are your thoughts on the DNC opening up the debate floor for Bloomberg? Did you see that last week? You know, I don't think they. Uh, this what he's going to buy his way in. <laughs> well, know, essentially, think- essentially, the DNC had a requirement for the viewers that aren't aren't aware of this. Yeah, they had a requirement that that you had to have so many donations by so many private donors of of something, and for the longest time there were candidates that couldn't meet that threshold. Mm -hmm. And so many of them dropped out as a result. And now all of a sudden the DNC appears to be lifting that, which is then going to allow Bloomberg into the discussion. And I've seen nothing but Bloomberg and the DNC getting blasted by Bernie and Bernie's folks by Mm -hmm. like, what what are you like? What are you doing? What, what is this about? That's right. You know, and I I think every other candidate on the left has a a, a valid argument against Mm -hmm. that. Well, you know, uh, Math Pig here, he's got a, a, an opinion about if uh, Trump gets back in, you know, we're all fucked. Pardon my French. Uh, but but my deal is he shouldn't get back in, right? He shouldn't. But then we've seen the corruption, the levels of corruption that go on to. So it would not surprise me. In fact, I could actually predict that he will get back in because of the level of corruption within our politics, the level of uh, mismanagement of our voting system, all these things. <clears throat> The gerrymandering, you combine all that and the money he's got. I, 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 I actually predict that it is so corrupt. Our election system is so corrupt that it doesn't matter. He'll be back in. By the end of his next term, the Republicans, because they control because of law, they'll be trying to go for a third term for Trump. Would not. I mean, I, I, I yeah, that would be. Now it's a poli- uh, conspiracy theory kind of. Yeah, yeah, boom, yeah. But it won't be. <laughs> The next segment brought to you by Reynolds tinfoil wrap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let me ask you this. So I came on to talk about Iowa and I also really wanted to focus on the next uh, couple States yeah. with New Hampshire, Nevada, and South Carolina. Let's say you end up with four different winners and let's say we get to super Tuesday and you know, let's say obviously because of name recognition, because of money, Joe Biden wins at least half of them. Okay. Let's say we get to convention and we, and we're split. Between. I mean that just even three to four, I, I don't okay. know if that's realistic, but let's say there's a legitimate argument that there's no clear cut front runner. Okay. Does that strengthen Trump's uh, argument as a, as a candidate? Does that strengthen why people should vote? For him again, because look at see I the Dems. Yeah, I'm curious. I I don't know what the answer is to that. Yeah, and part of the part of this whole process is to weed that out. If we have things like, in my opinion, what happened last time. So we here we have the Iowa caucus, and you've got a big massive, you know, five thousand people over here for for Bernie, and you've got two thousand people over here for uh, Biden, and a thousand people over here for Warren, and they come out and they're going, "Wow, Biden took it when the line slide." Yeah, we're gonna have problems, right? But but, right. but by the end of that, but because what's gonna happen is when we get that single candidate going up to Trump, because of their shenanigans on our own party, we're gonna be going. What it doesn't matter. 
It doesn't matter. Right. Whether they screwed us right. last time. They're going to screw us this time. That's the problem we're going to have. If we get as far as you said, and we have three or four candidates, we done something wrong. <laughs> right? No, we have. We've, we're shooting ourselves in the foot the whole way. And that's not even counting the illegal illegalities or whatever that happens over on the right. doesn't matter. Where's their primary? They have a primary. They're not even bothering this time. Let me go. Do you mind if I ask? Do you mind if I turn the tables and ask you a couple questions? You know, you can, but um, I'm kind of. I'm, I'm just. So. No, that's OK. That's OK. okay. So despite what the polling says, because obviously looking back to 2016 and this was not a primary polling thing that I'm uh-huh. bringing up, you know, during leading up to the presidential election, polling was showing that Donald Trump didn't stand a chance. Right. So given what happened, I think when we say, well, the polls say we need to have an asterisk on that. So with that said, which candidate. Which candidate, if they were to win tonight, again, going back to the annoying, what is a win, what isn't a win? Oh, yeah, I get you. I totally get you. Which, which candidate winning will kind of throw you off the most? Would it, would it throw you off if Elizabeth win, uh, Warren was declared the winner? Would it throw you off if Pete Buttigieg was declared the winner? That, that probably – it wouldn't well, – you, by you mean you mean turn me off as a voter or – No, 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 no. Oh, it would surprise yeah, like, throw, would be surprised. Yeah, like – yeah, like throw you off like, whoa, where the hell did that come from? <laughs> I, would, I would be surprised if, if Buttigieg did become the winner of either one of them. It'll, I, I, yeah. we, I would like to do, if you wouldn't mind, or we don't have to. I, cause I don't no, go for it. That. I was going to say we, we should do our own little predictions. You know, I, I think Bernie's going to take it. If it's going to be a populist, people actually showing up vote, I think it's going to be Bernie. Whenever he takes the beginning, whenever people get over and you see how many are over on his side and people, how many are – in the gray area, I think the gray area will see his side move. That's just so I think he'll take the first and second. That's just my thinking. I would be proud. Right. So I'm if looking want, at I'm looking at the New York I'm looking at the New York Times. I just want to remind folks how close 2016 was in Iowa mm-hmm. um, between Hillary between Hillary and Bernie. Uh huh. It came it came down to 0.3 percentage points. But Hillary is no Biden. I mean, Biden is no Hillary in my opinion. I, I was I was gonna flip. Yeah yeah yeah. I was gonna flip that. Well yeah. But, it's but like people see, go, oh, Mike, Mike Pence would be so bad if we got rid of Trump. I'm like, yeah, Mike Pence would be a bad person. He's kind of not really in my <laughs> camp. We're far away. But I don't think he would be as bad as Trump because he doesn't have the power, Trump. He doesn't have the, the name, the people following him, the all those things that go with being Trump. So if we got Trump out, although Pence would be bad, he would be toothless compared. Sort of like Biden and Hillary. Hillary was the big thing. Biden is the, mm, I mean, he talks, how many times has he come out and said something just kind of. Well, specific to this, this interview, (laughs) I asked, I asked Joe Biden whether he would bring on a secular outreach director. Okay. And his answer, his answer was basically a, a secular outreach director being a person whose sole job is to reach out to atheist and non-religious voters to say, hey, what are your concerns? Here's our candidate. We'd really like you to listen to their message. Can we do a town hall? Can we do something like that? Mm-hmm. His response was basically, well, I don't even have a religious one, so why would I bring on a secular one? Right. And it was interesting because when I tweeted the video and I showed the world, hey, this was his answer, it was actually a Trump supporter that pointed out to me on Twitter that Joe Biden, in fact, has a religious out- outreach director in South Carolina. So then it makes you wonder, like, okay, did he not even know? Or did he know when he was trying to fib, thinking I, I wouldn't know? Yeah. So, no, and, and my personal opinion is... I would think he just slipped his mind. No offense. I mean, obviously, I'm not a pro-Biden guy. <clears throat> he just got... He's There's a... Yeah, I think it just slipped, That's if I guessed. I don't think he... Yeah. yeah. Comparing today to 2016, I, I hear what you're saying about Joe Biden not being a Hillary person. Like... Joe yeah. Biden doesn't put out Joe Biden doesn't put out a book every two years. You know, Joe Biden is not part of this, you know, uh, I don't know how you want to say it, this Clinton esque family line of of uh, political royalty, if you will. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think also Joe Biden doesn't come with as much baggage, real or perceived, that Hillary did That's back true. in twenty sixteen. I get that. Yeah. And I really and, and the the flyer, I wish Looking back on it, I really want to do an assessment of what I could have done differently. Mm-hmm. And one of, the th- one of the things that if I could have done it differently was I should have tracked all of the correspondence that I received as an Iowa voter. And I should have m- taken note of what the messaging was because I'm also into photography and graphic design and then PR and marketing. So seeing what message they were trying to convey, 
And last, you know, lately what I'd been seeing was Joe Biden, both in commercials and on print, was going for more of this like Top Gun Maverick, you know, mm-hmm. him in a bomber jacket with the with the shades on, with the hat on, trying to come across as that big, strong, <laughs> tr- you know, brave, trustworthy man that can take down Trump. Right. And and I really do think because if you look at the boomers that are and that's not a derogatory. I'm, I'm literally saying right the, now, the demographic, we are, I understand the, de- the demographic right now. My personal opinion, not American atheist opinion, mm-hmm. is that 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 generation, <clears throat> like many other older generations, is probably more centrist. They're, they're a little bit more nervous about the future. Mm-hmm. They look at candidates like Elizabeth Warren and Bernie as being a little bit too outside of what they are comfortable with. Mm-hmm. Um, and they, they kind of just want things to get back to normal for a little bit before they go off and, quote unquote, invest in, quote, the crazy candidate like the Bernie. Mm-hmm. You know, like they just want the dust to settle just a little bit. Well, you know, it, I, I can't have, you know, you see in our country where we had the riot, the political riot, they got their their guy in like they wanted and they got all the stuff they wanted. I mean, the, where'd they get the money for that? All those tax breaks and all that. Where'd they get that? If we had had a person come in on the left and go as radical left and do all those things on the American credit card, but for the left instead of the right, you know, on the right, they're giving them, giving all these nesting yacht, like she calls them nesting yacht, rich people, more money. That's what they're holding. Let's give them as much money as they can on the left. If we had a candidate come in and take all that, that much money, billions and billions and billions of dollars and put it in schools and, <clears throat> and you know, all those things that the left wants to do with it, we would have been so much better off. But whenever we get a candidate, all of a sudden on our side, they're like, well, how can you pay for that? Well, they, they don't ask that question on their side at all, it seems. But on our side, we ask that question. And I think if we have to run up a tab to give our people some education, we should do that because they're willing to <clears throat> run up a tab and cripple our country just to give away tax to the rich. The one thing that I'm curious about, Tonight and tomorrow are the exit polls. And I just sent, uh, I just sent you a, a link from the New York Times that kind of gave a breakdown of the Iowa caucus and how the voters were. Um, and some of, the, some of the breakdowns they had was uh, densely populated counties versus sparsely uh, populated counties. Mm-hmm. Higher income, lower income. More college graduates, fewer. Uh, those that favored Barack Obama in 2008, those that favored Hillary Clinton in 2008. I think the one thing I'd like to see tonight and the, on the screen, the Republicans are on the left and the Democrats are on the right, which is, doesn't make sense. <laughs> but, but the thing I'm, I'm really curious tonight, if we can get some exit polling is to find out, did the youth show up? Did the youth show up in the numbers that they were anticipated in showing up for? Because I have a friend that's, in, that's highly involved with county level politics Mm -hmm. they are with they were within a local democratic party they wanted to tap into my pr marketing background they said listen we're going to do a float in the parade this was last summer it was probably more like last spring they wanted to do a float in this in the summer for their county party and they said what do you recommend what do you suggest and i said listen the only thing i'm going to say is if you blast up quote the big d i see a lot of floats that say oh we're democrats and that alone should be why you vote for us yeah Listen, if the if Democratic parties and Democratic voters, this again, my opinion, focus only on that to a younger generation that 2016 was their first time involved in politics, mm-hmm. the big D is the enemy to them. Yeah. Because they they look they look at what the Democratic Party did, real or perceived, that's right. as as screwing their candidate. And so the thing that I told this individual was, listen, if you really want to attract new voters, different voters, younger voters, focus on issues. Stop focusing on your title. You know, and don't get me wrong. Us atheists have to follow that. Us atheist activists have to get away from the big A word and really start focusing on all the other issues and how atheists give a damn about those. You know, we're not just here to talk. Yeah, go ahead. Well, I was going to ask you real quick, if, if you was to come up to Bernie and go, Bernie, are you going to hire a secular outreach person for your campaign? And he said, what are you doing for the next year and a half? <laughs> what would you say? Would you go? Would you be a secular outreach person for it? Here, here's, that's a very good question. I appreciate you bringing this up. Any um, candidate I'm, or would it have to be a specific candidate? So that's two different questions, but you get yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, 
Is there a lefty guy you would not be an atheist advocate for? Well, an atheist woman too. Oh, um, you know what I mean? I mean, yeah. <laughs> no, I do. I know. No, no, no. I, I hear you. Um, for all of us, for all those married folks out there, here's the best answer I could give. My wife's already given me the green light that if an opportunity ever presented itself, whether that meant I took the role on and moved, you know, or not, not necessarily moved, but I went and did the job for a while and she stayed back. Uh-huh. Or if, if we just totally relocated, it would be a very fun and interesting challenge. I think for me, it would be less about who the candidate is. I think whoever the candidate is, um, the fact that they would even, the fact that they'd even be willing to consider it mm-hmm. would it's really, right intri- it would really intrigue me. I mean, let's go a different route. Let's say there was a libertarian minded Republican candidate. Uh, there's a senator, a U.S. senator from Illinois that's very intriguing to me just because, in my opinion, um, he is – I'm going to try to get you the name. He is – he's been outspoken against Trump. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to see if I – yeah, I think it's the Adam Kinzinger who is a U.S. representative for Illinois' 16th district. Uh, he's 41 years old. I'm 38. Really? Wow. That's young. And for- – Yeah, very, very. And what's interesting about him, and again, this is my opinion, this could be totally off, is um, when this this generation of conservative slash Republican voters that don't give a crap what you're doing in your bedroom or who you love or who you find attractive or how many partners you want to have, when they when they get away from what substances you want to put in your body or how you want to change your body or how you want to make your body fit what's in your mind. Mm -hmm. I really think there's an opportunity, especially if we can then work to get religion and God and all that BS out of the Republican party, who knows, we might be, we might be able to get back to a world where, you know, the issues are just, how do we want to spend our money? How do, how do we think the, how do the, how do you think the country should spend its money? Yeah. And, and so anyway, going back to that, that individual, um, I think there's a lot of promise when you see candidates or, or elected officials like that, that don't talk in, in terms of the big R, the big D. Yeah. Uh, and and to, f- to finish up that idea, just because I've got to, I probably have maybe 15 more minutes and I've got to take the kids to school. But <clears throat> what I ended up telling this individual was, listen, focus on the issues, talk about unity, talk about bringing people together, because you know, this is one of the first times in American history where you've got voters and activists all the way across the age spectrum where you've uh-huh. even got you've even got 13, 14 year olds that know what the hell they're talking about. <laughs> you know, yeah. you've got um, one of them stands out to me, which is uh, Miss Helton down in Kentucky, who is a Planned Parenthood pro-choice activist who probably can't even drive a car. I think, you know. That's amazing. You got Greta coming over to talk about climate change. You have this young generation that's Mm -hmm. out there kicking ass. But at the same time, you've got your traditional 75, 80 year old, you know, stalwarts of these county parties and these state parties that are the glue of it. But at the same time can sometimes be the anchor that needs to be lifted a little bit to move the party forward to, to, to adjust to, to current times. So, wherever I'm at in that, <laughs> that discussion, I feel like I'm rambling, but hopefully the viewers are taking something from this that like, listen, there's a huge opportunity to bring all these different age groups together right. to bring all these mindsets together. Um, and, and again, that's what I'm hopefully going to try to do when New Hampshire comes, when Nevada comes, when South Carolina comes, mm-hmm. uh, there's actually, there's actually a secular group out in South Carolina. That's actually flying me out to do some presentations on secular activism, which is pretty exciting. I was going to wait until after today was over to then really start to promote that. Mm-hmm. Um, but I was, I was joking with the president of that group that I would love to um, maybe invite some of the pastors in the area over to South Carolina is very religious <clears throat> and they don't usually, they don't usually get to interact with a, uh, with an atheist, let alone an atheist that actually has been, has participated in politics that yeah. knows his stuff. Um, but anyway, that'll be, let's see if I can pull this up. Uh, if any of your viewers are out in the South Carolina area, uh, the presentation is titled "Godless Activism in the Holy City," God. and it's gonna be it's okay. gonna be pretty fun. It's gonna be pretty fun. 
Okay, that sounds interesting, yeah. I'm going to fly out on a Thursday and give a presentation on a Sunday night. Got to keep the, the Sabbath holy. Although I've heard that the Sabbath was actually supposed to be on a Saturday or something. <laughs> All right. So it would be Sunday, February 16th from 4 to 5.30 p.m. at Gage, G-A-G-E, Gage Hall okay. in Charleston. And I'll try to send you a link. Uh, a link? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm looking up here. There's actually a meetup uh, for it. It is the secular humanist of the low country. I just love that name. Okay, the yeah. low country. Yeah, that breakdown map is great. Yeah, but this is something that I really enjoy doing and I'd like to do more of is to go out to different parts of the country and, and try to inspire folks and answer all these questions. And seriously, if we just want to sit around a pub or a coffee shop and just, you know, chat until the place shuts down and just say, you know, what are our opportunities and, what, and how can we change the way we're thinking about this? And um, I posted the link should be going to everybody's. Awesome. Got that. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. And Do the right. viewers have any other questions? I mean, I, I enjoyed the questions earlier. I didn't know if anybody else had any thoughts or. Um, let me see. I hadn't seen any direct questions yet, but I mean, you've got to, I mean, it really is a busy day for you. What's the, the, the action and the excitement starts at seven o'clock tonight. What is your plan? <clears throat> so that's oh, very, you, yes, that's what I need to know. Yes. Yeah. So it's very, so it's very interesting. Um, I will share this and I'll be more, I'll be more candid about it tomorrow morning. I had been kind of supporting one candidate for a while okay. and due to lack of movement and action and, and response, I kind of stepped away from my activist mindset and I started uh, leaning more towards a different candidate okay. and I was then reminded that tonight Iowans have a unique opportunity to impact their county parties and their state party. And when all the caucusing is done, they start to do party business okay. where they will, they will elect officers and they will accept what are called planks. Planks are not the planks you do in your, in your workout area. <laughs> <laughs> but these, these planks are just basically pieces of paper that you submit that say, they're written as if you are the party. So it'll say like a lot of whereas, like whereas we are a party committed to inclusion, we support um, yada, yada, yada. And so I developed a whole bunch of planks for Democratic voters to take with them that are secular minded. And, you know, actually, I should I should send I should uh, at least for right now show you or tell you what some of them were. OK, yeah. So. Okay. So these are the Democratic planks, and feel free to let me know what you think of these. Uh, number one is to amend the statement of principles, where it talks about we want to fight for civil rights. I said we should add that we are committed to defending the U.S. Constitution, the basic foundation of our secular government, from ongoing attacks by Christian nationalists and weaponized religion. We will do all we can to prevent our republic turning into a theocracy based on the tenets of a narrow version of one religion. Right. Now, when, when you – how does the term weaponized religion fall? How do they take that when you – I mean, because that, that, it, it's like to me in my mind when you say that, you're saying don't pay attention to anything else I'm saying because nobody's going to listen to it. Because we're vilifying religion. How does that come No, it's, it's, it's interesting. I get so many comments and positive comments from religious folks. Okay, that agree, they agree with it because they think that their faith is being bastardized for the political gains of others. Okay, good, good. That's kind and of so what, And so what I, try to, what I always try to do when I'm out in public <clears throat> is give religious people the benefit of the doubt. I never try to assume that they are the religionists, the theocrats. I always try to give them the benefit of the doubt that they are part of the majority of Christians or religious folks that just want to go to church, to a mosque, to a synagogue, and, you know, believe in what they want to believe and do good things. Right. I, wait, I wait until they prove otherwise. I wait until they give me any inclination that they're part of the problem. Yeah. 
And so here's the best part about these these but, uh, but the weaponized planks. religion, the weaponized religion talk. Though I'm sorry, you know what? I'm getting no, away you're good. Planks. No, you're good. And who knows? Maybe I have to come back on I next just, week. <laughs> I, just don't want your, I just don't want your plank to get sunk by wording. <laughs> Oh, right, right, right. At what point is that? Who defines which church is weaponizing it? And what defines weaponized religion? Absolutely. It, because you're, you're a person going, now, you're going to, me and you will think that making our children uh, take two minutes of prayer in school, that's weaponizing religion. They won't agree. Right, right. right. If at the end of the day, I could have a county chair call me and say, hey, got your planks. I could tell they were yours because I'm local. <laughs> let's, let's talk about it because uh, they have... They have party platform chairs and committees that talk about these things. So if at the end of the day, if at all the oh yeah, there's Anne. Woohoo! Yeah. Anne and if I can, Anne is a rock star. Anne is one of the rising stars in Iowa that I hope everyone gets used to seeing this name. Okay. Um when when I started doing this in 2020, Anne came out of nowhere and was shot out of a cannon like, Justin, I'm going to go to this. I'm going to go to this. What do you want me to do? Does she need to be on the show? Do we need to get Absol her on the show? Ab as long as she feels comfortable being on the show, I think she would enjoy it. Oh, I suspect. Well, she's got a message to get out. Clearly, she, I mean, yeah. As soon as I saw the secular planks tonight, I thought, I need to show that to you. I didn't know you already knew her. <laughs> yep, yep. And Anne is good stuff. And uh, Anne and I are already starting to conspire on other stuff so that's great see and that's what one one of my next to last questions i was kind of going to wait till we got af out of the stream but you gotta go so i'll just hit you up here anything yeah go right ahead any kind of live streaming during the caucus or doing it during any of this all you got to do is let me know i'll start the stream you can pop in we can run if you got a booth or table you want to stream out of i've got a base. I don't <clears throat> So going back with these planks, excuse me, <clears throat> one thought that I've had, and I don't, I still don't know if I'm going to do this and maybe I'm giving up, I'm, I'm showing my cards, is there's a part of me that really wants to infiltrate the Republican caucus tonight because their platform is, should I say, god awful. If you ever want something fun to look at, go to the, tw go to Google and type in or whatever your search engine is and type it, type in the 2018 Iowa Republican uh, party platform. And yes, I'm picking on the Republicans only from the sense of, of trying to affect change. Okay. And when they talk about our rights come from God, and that's one of the first things that they say, oh, that's goodness. a problem. It's right. That's here. a You're problem. Right. Okay. That's a problem. Yeah. Because as even their voters become more uh, secular and less religious, they shouldn't be subjected to this crap. Yeah. Yeah. They're just getting more and more from the middle, it seems. Right. And so my thinking is there's mm -hmm. going to be a number of supporters on the Democratic side that's, that are going to go do their thing. And, you know, maybe I go to the Republican one and submit these planks and try to start a conversation that is a very tough but needed one within their ranks to then start the conversation, get the ball rolling. Uh, and hopefully there's other atheists within that party that say, yeah, you know what, why, why do we have this language in here? And finally it gets brought up. And the best part with these planks is I don't have to put my name to them. Like if I, I would be happy to, right. but if we, if we submit these planks, they won't know where they came from in my area. Oh, they'll know exactly who it came from. Right. But in other areas, we've got we've got a, a conservative atheist down in Polk County, which is Des Moines, that's going to be submitting these. So if you know of a conservative atheist or a Republican atheist out across Iowa that wants to submit some planks tonight, let me know. Heck yeah. Well, if this... you don't mind, let me sh let me share just the one wording that I think is going to get the biggest rise. Yeah, hook us up. Um, this this is for the Republican one. Um, this is the rights come from God. And let me see if I can share the file with you quick. One ring, one ring says the GOP is turning into the evangelical party more and more every day. This is oh, absolutely. Absolutely. So here is a plank that addresses that issue about um, our rights come from God. And so this is very wordy. And it's one part plank, but it's one part me sending a message saying, okay, I see this. I know this. I'm putting it on notice. And I even quote uh, Andrew Seidel from FFRF because he wrote an article about uh, the dangers of parties and lawmakers saying that our rights come from God. 
wait, wait. So I okay. simply put. This is yours. You sent me. This is my plank that I developed. Okay. The little, the italic in the middle is Andrew Seidel's quote. Okay. The bottom, but the bottom is basically me saying, "Okay, party. Th this is how we should think." Number one, the United States was established with a secular go government that's guided by a godless constitution. The existence of any God has never been proven and cannot be proven. As our country becomes less religious, including as many as one in four Iowans, that number continues to rise each year. It's important to note that the United States is not and never has been a Christian nation and that civil rights and human rights of Iowans and Americans are absolute and universal. They derive from the founding documents of this country and are asserted by those elected to serve. Now, be it resolved that the Republican Party of Iowa should acknowledge that our rights come from our founding documents and the assertion of the principles included in them, not from anyone's God. Is it wordy? Absolutely. If they read it and it pisses them off, then I did my job. Well, you know, brother, I, I have to say that there is nothing in this document they will agree on. Nothing. Oh, I, exactly. I anything, even the inalienable civil rights to, to be nice to other people. <laughs> 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 There's nothing. Okay, I get it. This, this is going to be fun. I have one for the Democratic Party okay, that I thought yeah. was just, that was that was just kind of entertaining. Um, now this is not a pro-gun or anti-gun stance, <sighs> but this is a stance that so American Atheist has a poster that we take to our rallies that say thoughts and prayers, and then it has prayers crossed out, and it has a giant word of action. This plank just says thoughts and prayers to solving the issue of gun violence. We oppose them. <clears throat> we oppose. <laughs> yeah. So here's what's interesting. The, the platform for the Republicans is much more like a bunch of paragraphs, like sentences, like we do this and we do this and we do this. The Democratic Party in Iowa is much more like a shopping list, like, okay, yeah, we're against this, 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 this. We need to make sure we pick up some bananas, fruits, apples. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> so the, the Democratic Party starts off with we, uh, we support, and then they list like five or 50 things, and then we oppose. Mm. So the way I drafted this is we oppose thoughts and prayers to solving the issue of gun violence. Because it takes a direct shot at any lawmaker that wants to constantly say, no, nah, thoughts and prayers, another school shooting, thoughts and prayers, another mass shooting, thoughts and prayers. So it's not pro-gun. It's not anti-gun. It just simply says our party's committed to, to actually doing more than just that. Right. Because apparently is it tongue in cheek? Is it, is it tongue in cheek? Absolutely. But I think sometimes you've got to be provocative to get the conversation started. Absolutely. Yeah, consider it. <laughs> let's see, that's the whole deal. How more provocative could you get than children being murdered in schools? Right. There's just no more. I mean, if that doesn't do it, I remember seeing a meme that says, you know, you knew we knew we were screwed whenever murdering kids in schools was not enough to turn this conversation to, to change yep. their minds. How many kids have to die? You know, and you know what a lot of them is, it's like, no, I don't want this. I'm up for pro guns. And then their kid dies, you know, and suddenly things change or they don't, you know, and that's, yep. the, and you know, yep. that one pro mom who was all really ugly pro gun mom, who's really ugly about her pro guns and shove it in your face. And her kids are out showing who got shot in the back by her own kid who was playing with the gun because he got it out of her purse, you know? These people ain't no, right. I, we have a I problem in our country. <laughs> that's that's a whole different video right now. I was just gonna say that's a perfect segue to the next episode. But with that, I should probably I should probably log off and uh, take get day. on with get on with my day. And I'll I'll send you updates if I have any throughout the day. And um, you know, depending on what kind of support I can get uh, from conservative atheists, uh, tonight could take a whole different turn for me. So we'll see. Yeah, well, let me. One, what is the time of action? Whenever, what is the results? What time do the results start coming in that we can tell? So, if yeah, I were to do good. my own stream to kind of cover this, what would be a good time for me to start my stream? Ir irrespective of American atheists, it'd be wonderful if I could have some. Right, more right, right. But just because it's got my own interest up, I want to. I want to watch. Oh, I plan on staying up all night watching the okay. results. Oh, yeah, I'm actually. Okay. Well, well, I want to see. Uh, so this is according to Politico, and this was from I think four hours ago. I'll send this to you. Okay. Um, and 
I apologize to the viewers that are like, oh, we lost his face. My face is nothing to look at. <laughs> it says <clears throat> we will get some data right at 7 p.m. Central. However, the first numbers from the entrance poll conducted on behalf of a consortium of TV news networks. Um, okay. Yeah. I'll follow this. I'll, I'll look around. I'll see. I'll, I'll try to figure out. Well, obviously, this start time, if I can find somebody, some people who want to show up and uh, maybe do the po political thing with me. Uh, I'll probably start about six forty-five, seven o'clock thereabouts. Start watching. Yeah, I'll watch yeah. it on the interwebs. It'll be interesting, and like I said, maybe we won't even know who "quote unquote" the winners are until tomorrow morning too, because if it, uh, it could just get really crazy. <clears throat> I'd like to see the spin. Yeah, yeah. It, by that same token, it could be like, oh wow, this happened. This right. one first, like Elizabeth Warren may have a blowout showing. Right. Oh, that'd be well with that anyway i gotta get going yeah, but, uh, Let me i have it. appreciated it thank you very much i'm gonna i'm gonna just sign off thank you everybody for joining us i appreciate you you have a wonderful day and we'll see you tomorrow or tonight if i stream tonight. y'all have a wonderful day sounds good thanks everyone thank you